Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news coming in from the University of Virginia, where a suspect has just been taken into custody in a shooting that took the lives of three football players. Police have been searching for the suspected shooter since last night. The chief of police there got word the suspect was in custody during a news conference. Here's what we have also learned. The three students killed in this shooting were all members of the school's football team. The shooting happened on a school bus full of students returning from an off campus field trip. The suspect is also a student. Investigators say he had been on their radar. Mr. Jones, they received information that Mr. Jones had made a comment about possessing a gun to a person that was unaffiliated with the university. In other words, a third party. Investigators say that Lavelle Davis, Deshaun Perry, and Devin Chandler were shot and killed by their former teammate Chris Darnell Jones. Along with the three men who are now dead, police say that there are two others who were injured. One is in critical condition, the other listed in good condition. Investigators were searching for Jones for 12 hours. He is now facing three counts of second degree murder and three counts of using a handgun to commit a felony. We don't have word on a motive. We will continue to keep you updated on this tragedy out of Virginia, bring you any updates both here on the air and, of course, on Local 4 News First at 4 and all day long on ClickOnDetroit.com. Here at home, activities are starting back up again as we speak at the Oakland University after scary moments this morning on campus. Police were searching for two people with guns and told that students should stay indoors. That shelter in place was lifted earlier this morning. Victor Williams joins us now live from Oakland University to bring us up to speed on how this all started because it actually had nothing to do with the university. It's just where these car thieves were trying to ditch the vehicles. Yes, that is correct. And things are slowly getting back to normal here on campus. Activities and classes have been delayed till about noon, but with that now passing, we have seen people moving about just like normal and usual. Uh, but, you know, students were warned to stay indoors because these men were believed to be very armed and dangerous. Students at Oakland University are no longer believed to be in any danger with the school issuing an all clear. Let's rewind a little bit though. We're told the entire situation is linked to multiple cars being stolen from a dealership in Grand Blank Township. One driver making a getaway ended up crashing on I-75 at Jocelyn about 25 miles from where the cars were stolen. Police said two people decided to abandon another one of the cars near Oakland University and that's why students were asked to shelter in place for hours as the search for the suspects played out. Authorities say the suspects were believed to have been in or around the Meadowbrook Amphitheater. All campus activities were canceled. That's until the shelter in place order was lifted. Prior to that happening, it was a lot of anxiety for students like Akeem Mitchell. There's a lot of anxiety. I think a lot of people aren't here because their moms are like, yeah, just don't go today. And people are canceling classes and stuff. It's pretty hectic, a pretty big toll on everybody. So, I mean, we're, we're still churning. We're kind of a little used to it because we're seeing a little more violence here, unfortunately. Um, but things, things are all right, um, and, and we're just glad that nobody's hurt. And the search does continue for those two men, but all students here on campus are believed to be just fine. Those two men are no longer believed to be right here on campus. We'll have more on what these students have to say at 5 p.m. For now, we are reporting live at Oakland University. Victor Williams, Local 4. Victor, have police or Sheriff's Department given any descriptions of who they may be looking for, how the community can help track these car thieves down? Yeah, these are two men um, believed to be slim build African Americans and um, last they were seen, they were wearing hoodies. So that's something to be on the lookout for. Mm, rather vague description there, but nonetheless, hopefully they are able to track them down. Victor, thank you. This afternoon, students from multiple schools in Metro Detroit are at home because of threats in Oakland County. Ferndale High School and Middle School closed because of an anonymous threat made on Instagram. The district says that it's out of an abundance of caution and to give police time to figure out if it's a legitimate threat or not. Over in Macomb County, all Clintondale community schools are closed because of a threat made to the school district. They will start back up tomorrow. 
President Biden is meeting with China's president for their first in-person meeting since President Biden took office. The two are in Indonesia right now, ahead of this week's G20 summit. While the president handles diplomatic issues, Democrats secured control of Congress. Let's get to Drew Petromol. He joins us now in Washington with the big headlines from the nation's capital. President Biden in Bali for meetings ahead of the G20 summit this week as his party celebrates their midterm wins. What these elections showed is that there's a deep and unwavering commitment in America to preserving and protecting and defending democracy. Over the weekend, key Senate races were called for Democratic candidates, meaning their party now controls the agenda in the Senate for the next two years. The tipping point came in Nevada with a batch of mail-in ballots that secured victory for Catherine Cortez Masto. The victory is for Nevada and all of us. Cortez Masto, just one of the Democrats who beat a Republican opponent, backed by former President Donald Trump. In Arizona, Mark Kelly is striking a tone of bipartisanship after his victory. I'm so honored that Arizona has entrusted me. Some Republicans now questioning their party's future as Trump appears to be gearing up for another presidential run. Those who are most closely aligned with the former president did underperformed. Uh, those who are talking about the future, who had managed their states well, they overperformed. The American people want ideas, they want a future. Control of the House remains uncertain, with nearly two dozen races yet to be called. It took a great deal to get to where we are, and we'll just see. Still, the strong showing by Democrats is giving a boost to President Biden, who met with Chinese leader Xi Jinping today. He was clear and I was clear that we'll defend American interests and values, promote universal human rights, and stand up for the international order and work in lockstep with our allies and partners. Their first face-to-face -face meeting of the Biden presidency. On the agenda for that high-stakes meeting between the leaders of the U.S. and China, threats against Taiwan, North Korean missile strikes, and the war in Ukraine. Drew Petromo, NBC News, Washington. All right, Drew, thank you. Also today, President Biden said voters should not expect much of anything from Congress on abortion rights because Democrats lack the votes with the House more than likely to be under Republican control. You are paying less to fill up this week. Gas prices in Metro Detroit are down over a quarter to under $4 a gallon. Prices dropped 26 cents in the past week to an average of $3.94 a gallon. And it's still 56 cents more than this time last year. AAA says that the recent price spikes are reversing course because oil prices are going down and they think that the drops could continue. Let's hope so. Meanwhile, what's also been dropping is the temperatures. We are still in the 30s right now here in downtown Detroit as we take a live look at what doesn't even look like a real picture. It's so sharp and beautiful from our Windsor Skycam with that upgrade. Uh, it's cold out there, but at least we're getting a little bit of sun, Brandon. Well, that picture looked exactly like it is kind of chilly out if you had that same perception. But yes, a little sun does help. 40 is our number right now. It's really one of two 40 degree temps in the area. City Airport and Metro Airport, both in the lower 40s. Everybody else, middle upper 30s. And the wind is fairly light, so 36 Lapeer and Pontiac feels like 36. Yet 40 at Metro feels like 37. So a little nip in the air. There are some clouds coming and going, but we'll see low 40s and a nice blend of sun and clouds on this manic Monday. You can see the clouds just kind of swirling around without any real threat for any wet weather, dot, dot, dot. Yet we are tracking a rain and snowmaker on the horizon headed our way coming up. 